Okay, so my adopt a protein project is on lactoferrin, and let's get into it. So lactoferrin is a key component in human tears, milk, and blood, and this acts as a bacteriostatic agent, and it does this through its iron sequestering capabilities. A little bit of background on lactoferrin. First off, it's a glycoprotein, and these proteins are known as globular proteins, which means that they're spherical proteins. This is a common orientation for most proteins. Others consist of fibroses, fibros, disordered, or even membrane proteins. Um, spherical shake structure of glycoproteins is due to the structure being tertiary and the tertiary structure will have a single polypeptide chain known as the backbone with one or more protein secondary structures that are known as the protein domains. Um, it also will have amino acid side chains that may interact and bond in a number of ways and you'll see this later on and how lactoferrin has amino acids. Characteristics of glycoproteins, they're multifolding, so the tertiary structures will fold in a number of ways into like a quaternary structure. Protein folding is seen to be connected to with the treatment of disease and anti-cancer ligands. Um, when a protein folds, it changes its structure which will change its function and then that's how they kind of see how it can treat anti-cancer can treat cancer I mean most are somewhat water soluble and this is due to their hydrophobic amino acids are typically towards the inside while the hydrophilic amino acids are pointed outwards giving it slight solubility So a little bit on lactoferrin folding. Um, the molecule is made up of two lobes. You have your in lobe and your C lobe. Each lobe have it has two of its own domains. And so that's your in one domain, in two domain, C one domain, C two domain. Uh, domains are pointed away from each other, so that's what these arrows are indicating. And if you turn one of these lobes about 180 degrees, I think it's about 150 degrees, it can be superimposed on top of each other. And also, these lobes are connected by a three helix residue right here. Um, the first 90 to 100 residues make up the first domain so that's about 190 to 1 to 90 residues for the N1 domain and about 350 to 450 for the C lobe and here's a little bit on its folding you have about four parallel strands in the one in the first domain and two anti-parallel and then four parallel in the second domain and one anti-parallel and this is the N domain and you can see the C domains back here a little bit of you can see the iron that's bound right here so a little bit on iron binding properties there are the iron binding family has transferrin along with lactoferrin and there's a few other iron binding proteins in this family. Um, iron binding proteins are generally used to play roles in metabolism. Um, they're carrier proteins that will carry ions across the membranes and are more generally metalloproteins so they'll 
usually contain a metal cofactor. So in Lactoferrin's case, that's iron. It can also be copper or some other some other metals. Um, iron binding proteins are serum proteins, so they're found in the blood and they're they bind and transport iron, as you can tell. Um, lactoferrin is part of the transferrin family, and both are very similar proteins. So, both are glycoproteins. They both have roughly the same size at 80 kDa. Um, both are about 700 amino acids residue as in length, and both bind to two iron three ions but they do have the difference in this um binding affinity is a big one lactoferrin binds about 300 times greater to iron than transferrin does to iron this has a few implications it means that iron will hold on at a more acidic ph that's lact lactoferrin uh, lactoferrin lets go of iron probably at about a pH of 3 to 4, while transferrin will let go of iron at about a pH of 5 to 6. So a little bit about lactoferrin binding. Lactoferrin binds to two iron 3 ions, and that's one per uh, lobe has six different ligands that interact with the iron that it binds to. Um, two of these bo are bound to tyrosine. So tyrosine amino acids, one is part of the main two, and that's seen right here. And the other tyrosine is part of the backbone. Um, it also binds to histidine amino acid, and that's also part of the backbone, this 252. And it also binds to aspartic acid, which is this one right here, and that's part of the main one. And here's your iron right there. The other two ligands are from carbonate or bicarbonate ions. Um, the iron sites, so this would be like the in lobe, and the other one would be like the same exact thing for the C lobe. And the iron right here is about 42 angstroms apart from each other. It's a little more on transferrin. Once again, it's a glycoprotein like lactoferrin. Um, it is also an iron transporting protein like lactoferrin besides not binding to iron at such a great affinity. Um, a little bit on how it transports iron. It has the capability of transporting two iron ions and a little about like the vocabulary. Holiotransferrin is transferrin that is bound to iron ions and apotransferrin is not bound to iron ions. So how transferrin is recepted into the cell membrane, this is kind of what it goes over. Uh, transferrin will interact with the transferrin receptor from the outside of the cell membrane. So that's right here. But before it does it's going to be apotransferrin, and then it needs to bind to iron ions to be able to become holiotransferrin, or I think this, yeah. Um, we then have this transferrin receptor take up the transferrin protein, and we'll start creating this vesicle pit, and the clathrin coated pit. We'll then start forming the vesicle more, and then you have your vesicle, and the vesicle will then uncoat, and the transferrin protein will enter an early endosome, 
and this endosome will have a more acidic pH, which will have the transferrin protein let go of the iron, and the opotransferrin, once again, will be recruited outside of the cell membrane to go and recruit some more iron ions. This is it's thought to be the same system that lactoferrin will be will take iron into a cell membrane. Um, so the structure of lactoferrin, iron binds sites that are about 42 angstroms apart from each other once again. So here you have your iron ion in the in-lobe and here's the other iron ion. And so this is a C-lobe. Turn it about 180 degrees onto this and be superimposed on top of each other. Um, some rules of lactoferrin. Once again, it's known as a bacteriostatic agent, which uh, basically prevents bacteria from growing through its uh, iron sequestering capabilities. Um, it just withholds iron from it and Lactof I mean, then bacteria can't get the essential nutrients to grow, and they all end up dying. Um, bacteria has been able to overcome lactoferrin binding to iron. Um, bacteria is able to secrete chelating agents to acquire the iron bound to the lactoferrin. This is uh, pretty interesting because the environment that is needed for lactoferrin to release iron is uh, one that has to be more acidic for the lactoferrin. And reading through an article uh, that dealt with the protein much like lactoferrin in that it binds to iron also, uh, they use different chelating agents to see how they were able to release iron from the protein. Um, yet they had problems with uh, conditions uh, that I'll go over in the next slide. Um, so bacteria could create some uh, like free radicals that would be harmful to the cell system. So, lactoferrin, iron sequestering. Um, iron sequestering is basically this capability of uh, iron being able, being able to donate and accept electrons with these. It's essential for cellular redox for organisms. Um, yet this reactive nature of can be a, a harmful species if not controlled can harm the homeostasis of the cellular system through iron potentially being toxic uh, being cytotoxic to the cell uh, it can create a reactive species like oxygen or nitrogen or even hydroxyl radicals um, some of these conditions can be seen in the article with a protein similar to lactoferrin. So I'm going to go over that protein, and that's known as hemosiderin. Hemosiderin has uh, sequestering qualities like lactoferrin. I mean, iron will. Yeah. This protein is known as a major storage unit of iron in the hep hepatic part of the body, so the liver. Um, so it'll store iron in there. And when iron overloaded conditions, there's more hem hemosiderin produced, and it'll start accumulating in hepatic lysosomes. And this will create per peroxidative injury to the lysosomes. Um, which are response, these lysosomes are responsible for cellular homeostasis by basically acting as a waste disposal system of biomolecules. Um, peroxidative injury is basically an oxidative 
degrading of lipids. Uh, this will be done through the free radical sodium electrons from the cell's membranes lipids, which will continue as a chain reaction. Uh, the formation of hydroxyl radicals are toxic to the cell, the environment, and are usually formed because iron's toxicity. Um, this will also stimulate lipid preoxidation, the hydroxyl radicals, when iron's overloading and basically it will lead to cellular damage because the lipid membrane is being damaged. Um, Hemocytorin is the protein that was also tested with chelating agents. Um, and some of these chelating agents, although we're able to like let go of iron, um, like hemocytorin was able to let go of iron, but the peroxidative injury would be created because free radicals would be created. Like they could get pH to be neutral and less acidic, but still they have these free radicals being developed. Um, so the sequestering is beneficial when lactoferrin can bind to iron and hold on to it tightly. Uh, this can starve the bacteria effectively, depriving it of essential nutrients for growth, yet bacteria is also have it, has its ways to compete with the lactoferrin. So that's all. Um, let me know if you understand a little bit more of lactoferrin. Um, did you learn anything? And do I need to go more in depth? Let me know improvements of what I need to touch up on more, what I need to go more into depth, uh, or if I need to go less into depth. I think I made it pretty basic, but just let me know your comments.